Unbeknownst to a woodcutter and his wife, a baby was left hidden in their stable. And later, that baby was found and became a part of their family as they weren't able to conceive children. They named the child Arian Sharone. Arian was very smart. He was able to read on his own just from a few words his mother taught him, which led the woodcutter and his wife to grow suspicious of Arian's lineage, as they started to believe he was from a noble family. But nonetheless, they still loved the child and took care of him. As little Arian grew older, he got fascinated by magic, and after a visit to the city with his father, he managed to encounter a teacher from a magic academy. And with a demonstration of wind magic shown by the teacher, Arian asked him, What is magic? And even though he didn't fully understood the meaning of what the teacher told him, his fascination with magic grew tremendously after that fateful encounter. He then sets his sight on becoming a mage. On his way back home that same day, the boy was caught in an alley and was beaten very badly. And on the brink of death, Arian was able to enter the spirit zone, which was required in order for any mage to use magic. In this zone, he could feel and see everything as if he was split up into a million pieces. And using the magic the teacher had shown him before, he completely destroyed his enemies that day, which left a certain impression on a noble crimson-haired girl. After that event had took place, an opportunity was presented to him, which, if taken, would bring him closer to his goal of becoming a mage, but also has its own risk. But with his parents' support, he took the offer, which was to be brought to the noble Ojin family to work in their library to arrange 10,000 books within two years. The butler left and gave them a week to consider the offer. After the week had come to an end, the butler returned and Aryan hugged his parents for the last time and said goodbye as he entered the Ojin family's carriage and departed to the main house. On his first day of arriving, he was dressed as a butler and was told the do's and the don'ts he must follow in order to have a smooth, trouble-free life for the two years he will be there. Not wasting a single moment, Arian starts his true purpose of taking the job, which was to read the books in the library and deepen his knowledge about history and magic. As Arian continued his life of working in the library, a certain fiery blue-haired noble, which was Ryan Ogent, the youngest son of the Ogen family, bursted through the library door and asked Arian to deceive his teacher because he didn't want to train anymore. But like caught between a rock and a hard place, Arian had to choose between angering a noble or getting beaten by a sword master. And of course, in order to keep his life, he revealed where Ryan Ogent was hiding and thus angered him. After what had happened, Ryan showed up again, but this time, he didn't come to hide but to challenge Arian, who had never learned swordsmanship in his life, to a duel. And being a noble, Arian couldn't refuse, as it could lead to putting his family in danger, so he had no choice but to accept, even though he could end up dying. As soon as the fight had begun, Arian was being overpowered. Ryan, who had trained for years after being inferior when compared to his older brother, felt relieved that he was winning. But right when the fight had reached its final moments, Arian entered the spirit zone and read the movements of Ryan and shattered his wooden sword into pieces, which surprised both Arian and Ryan. As Ryan began to feel inferior than Arian, it resulted in him challenging Arian again to a duel. But this time, it will take place in a month's time with real swords and their life on the line. And just like before, Arian had no choice but to accept. Thus began Arian's night training of him reading beginner swordsmanship books and swinging his sword with no guidance whatsoever. With just his brain and his diligence, Arian completed his training and the month had ended. Now they stand face to face with each other with their swords in hand and began the second duel. Just like Arian had done in his previous duel, he used the spirit zone to figure out Ryan's movements, which caused him to feel even more inferior to Arian which led him to become even more serious. With one final clash, Ryan decided to use his most powerful move, which had greatly surprised Arian. But with his mind at ease, he calmly assessed the situation, and with a turn of his sword, the duel had come to an end, as Ryan loses his sword once again. With a sigh of relief by Arian, he started to express his actual feelings about the duel, and after hearing how Arian felt, 
Ryan was surprised that Aryan wasn't belittling him, and they ended up becoming friends, which, from a noble perspective, a commoner becoming friends with a noble was outrageous, but even with that in mind, Aryan still agreed. From that day onward, whenever Aryan was working at the library, Ryan would come and spend time with him, even though he had no interest in books, but rather became intrigued by Aryan's love for books and his ability to read so fast. But right at that moment, Ryan's brother entered, which startled both Aryan and Ryan as they were keeping their friendship a secret from everyone. Being the tyrant Ryan's brother is, he asked Aryan who would win if a knight and a mage fought. But with a huge amount of insight, Aryan calmly explained how the fight would play out and showed him that if the knight and the mage was evenly matched, the mage would win and after a swift refusal by Ryan's brother, he walked out of the library and both Aryan and Ryan was able to relax. After a year and six months of working for the Ojin family, Aryan had completely arranged the 10,000 books that was assigned to him and was about to leave and go back to his parents but decided to talk to Ryan one last time, and as a favor, he was invited to the Ojin family's house, which was prohibited for him to enter. While they were there, Ryan showed Aryan around his house, and after hearing a wonderful melody, Aryan wandered off by himself to find out where the sound was coming from. And while listening from afar, he was discovered by the girl that was playing the piano. He was then asked if he had played the piano before, and after admitting that he was never able to play it before. The girl told him to come and try playing something. After taking a seat, Aryan played the piano by using the spirit zone to replicate the movements of the girl's fingers on the piano, which was terrible at first. But as he kept playing, he was able to perfectly replicate the song the girl had played, which caused her to be amazed at what had happened. But right as Aryan had finished playing, Ryan bursted into the room. And later, Aryan found out that the girl who was playing the piano was Ryan's sister. After Ryan and his sister had gotten into an argument between siblings, after hearing news of his older brother's achievements, his sister had to leave. After Ryan's sister had left, Aryan started to blush, and with a gentle voice, he asked Ryan if his sister had a boyfriend, which caused Ryan to pause for a moment. After a sudden realization as to what Aryan meant, he started to laugh and ran out the door with Aryan chasing after him, begging him to stop. But to no avail, Ryan made it out and shouted out what Aryan had asked him, causing everyone to hear, including the maids and especially a loyal butler of the Ojin family, which he then reported the news of what he had saw to the family head of the great and noble Ojin family. Which brings us to the end of the first part of this manhwa. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.